Hello and welcome to this Full Stack Jack video. On this channel, I do videos about full stack web development. If that's something you're into, subscribe. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at a demo app I built, and I'm going to show you some of the things I learned while taking on this challenge. This application uses Nux3 as the client and Laravel as the API. But one of the first things I learned when checking out the documentation is you can actually use Nux as not only a client, but also as a server. Let's take a look at what that might look like. We have a component that shows us the page count. Let's see what that looks like in the code. Here we have a component and it is using a composable. A composable is simply a function that is called from this composables directory by convention. And this function does some something, it does that one thing and you can use it anywhere in the application. So that is a composable in a nutshell. It's just a reusable function. So this composable helps us make API calls, use async data, and it uses the fetch library from oh my fetch. Everything I mentioned in this video will be linked in the description. So this is uh, like the typical fetch, but with a bunch of nicety. It will automatically use the internal API from Nux, which is a Nitro node application. So we give a slash API slash count. That maps directly to this server directory, API count. And that is the function that is being called. So that function is running on the server. I, and we're calling it here from the client. We can also call external APIs. I only scratch the surface using Nux as an API. If that's something you'd like to see more about, let me know in the comments below. This particular application uses Laravel as a backend. And while building out the authentication system, I ran into some issues with state and I'd like to share with you what I learned. So I built this little demo here that shows us the different kinds of state. So we have dynamic state and we have persistent state. If you're building an authentication system, that state needs to be persistent because when the user refreshes, you don't want them to be logged out every time. So let's look at the different kinds of state we have. If you use a ref, which is a new way to make a variable dynamic in view, and we attach that to a V model, we'll see it is reactive, but once we refresh, it's gone. So we can't use that to persist data. A more advanced way to reference in Nuxt is the use state, and that actually syncs the state of the API and the client. So use state is the way to go if you're using Nuxt as the client and the API. However, if you're not using Nuxt as the API, once you refresh, so I can update this state here, once I refresh, it's also gone. So I needed to find another way. And I found a library called use view, which I believe will be part of view core in the future. For now, you have to pull it in. Here is me pulling it in here in the composer JSON. So you just NPM install it. And when you do that, you can actually use the storage instead of just the state. Oh, debugger. <laughs> so you can use storage instead of state. So what is storage? Local storage is basically a small, tiny little database in your browser that just key value pairs. So it allows you to store things in your browser that survive a page refresh. And this particular example, go red, it should be go reds. I'm re okay. It should be go, go reds. Um, that is attached directly uh, to the storage from this composable use storage. So let's see what that looks like when we update it. So go bangles. and we'll update it and we'll see that is updated automatically. And that way we can actually persist a user for authentication. So let's take uh, a little look at the login component to see what something like that might look like. So I have these refs, which are basically the form and the errors. So those are things that are not going to persist as you know, and here is a composable that use cookie that is I, um, available also from you. I believe 
that is also in the, let me see, where is that? That is also, no, that's actual available in Nuxt. So that is available directly in Nuxt without using the view use um, library. And um, that lets you read the cookies. For example, one cookie that is very relevant for a login system is the CSRF token or XSRF token. And if I refresh, so let me, it's not showing it to me. Let me log out. Okay, now it will show it. So we have the um, XFRS token and the session token. So I can um, read these tokens using this composable. That is how you can persist um, information within Nuxt. A couple more tips I'd like to share with you. When installing Nuxt, one of the things I, uh, a few things that I ran into that I thought were a little silly, but it did actually um, take a bit of time from me. And that was, so if I npx, so let's install a fresh version. And that is everything you get with um, with Nux. And we'll already see here, this my node version is incorrect. And they tell you what they think you should use. So if I use nvm use 14, 6, 14, 2, we will be in better shape. And if I run npm install, okay, you got to be in the right directory. So if I run npm install, it will install. It happens relatively quickly. I'm not pausing it. We're going to see how quick it is. And I usually, it usually goes quicker than this. Yeah, perhaps because I used the wrong node version when setting things up. All right npm run dev now we have this page open and we'll see the advice that they give in the beginning isn't exactly correct so it says remove this welcome page by removing nux welcome or creating an app dot view well if we look we already have an app dot view it came with the app so that First of all, it doesn't make any sense. And if we just remove this, we're not going to get a result that we like. Then we have nothing. What they should say is create a Nuxt page and a pages directory if you want to use pages, for example. And here, just to show you that it works, we'll go with a new view file. We'll do index. and give it a template and we'll say hello world hello from pages now if we do a refresh we'll see hello from pages one more last tidbit and that is dynamic routing for example so let me open back up the project that i just had open and I will show you a little bit about what dynamic routing looks like, and then we'll call it close. So dynamic routing, if I go to pages, example, so this is a dynamic route. So if I need to go to example and then something, let's try that out. I think this application is still running somewhere. Yep. So example, and then some sort of number, and we'll see the order uh, we have this order page, but let's say I want to get this. How do I get it? Instead of this generic one, two, three, four, five, I want to get this ID. I already have the router here. No, use route. Can you say use route? Add import statement from Nux3. Yep, I guess you can. So use route. And then here, well, let's use route up here because I'm going to want to use it to replace this data here. Instead of having one, two, three, four, five, I want to get this ID. You pass it with brackets and then whatever you want to call this parameter. And then we just say route dot 
params.id. And let's see if that works. Refresh. And now we have the correct ID. And if I type in something for, uh, that's the wrong thing. So 44444, four, 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 four. we'll see that reflected here. So that is dynamic routing. It can get a lot more complicated. You can check out the docs if you want to go into more detail, but that will do it for this video. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next one.